Mr. Carroll here talking about simple resistor circuits. Uh, you've been given a few homework problems and so we'll just go through those and see what we can find. In the first problem you're given a power supply that is 12 volts and so we draw that right here with a positive and negative current going this way through the resistor and back. Because it's a simple resistor circuit we're going to be looking for the total resistance for the circuit, the total current, and the total power. And we're going to be looking for how much voltage is used up by each resistor and how much current and how much power is used by each resistor. Now the issue here is because it's a single resistor, we're going to have the total resistance is actually equal to 120 ohms. We don't need to do anything special for that. The next thing we do is we're looking for total current. Well, Ohm's law gives us V equals IR. Now that's volts equals current times resistance. We know the voltage. It's 12 volts because it's given to us uh, in the problem. We know the resistance, 120 ohms, so it's pretty straightforward to divide 12 by 120 and get 0.1 amps. And we stick that out on the right over here, giving us total current. Then we're looking at power. Power is defined as voltage times current, and since we have our volts of 12, our current of 0.1, our total power is 1.2 watts, and we'll stick that over here. Now, because we still need to find these three things, but they're pretty straightforward because it's the only resistor in the circuit. Now, when we get more than one resistor, these will have to take on a different way of solving them. But the voltage drop is just 12 because all of the voltage is gone because of that resistor because there's only one. The total current is the same as the current in the system because there's only one. And the power is identical. Now, what happens if we have a series resistor circuit? Now, a series circuit is one where you have a resistor that's connected end-to-end -end with another resistor. Now, here you have a 9-volt battery or 9-volt DC power supply. Current's coming up, goes through a resistor, then comes down and goes through another resistor. So that's why it's called a series circuit. We're still looking for the same thing, but you notice what happens here. I have a second resistor, so I'm going to have to find all of these things for both of the resistors. Now, it's not very difficult. It just takes a little bit of time. So let's take a look at the total resistance. Now, in a series circuit, it is defined as, the total resistance is defined as, you just adding up the resistors. It's an addition problem. So it's pretty straightforward here. RT, the total, is 50 plus 75, or 125 ohms. Now, we can represent that as a single resistor now. Now, this looks vaguely familiar to the previous circuit that we solved. So guess what? We actually use the same formulas to solve it the way we did the previous one. And so we put the 125 over here, and then we come back in with Ohm's law, V equals IR. We have 9 volts, 125 ohms, that gives us a, a current of 0 0.072 amps. We'll stick that over here. We do the power equals V times I. The power is 9 volts times 0 0.072 amps, 0.648 watts, and stick that over here. Now, we are done with finding the total for the entire circuit. So this DC power supply is pushing 9 volts through a resistance of 125 ohms. The current is 0 0.072 and the power is 0.648 watts for the entire circuit. But if we go back to the original circuit, it's actually two resistors. And so we're going to be over here trying to find out what goes on in each of those resistors. Now, in a series circuit, current is constant and the voltage changes. So we have the same current flowing through these and then we have a different voltage across each resistor. So since the current's the same, I can just take the current in the whole circuit and put it in these two locations which means now I can find the voltage. So voltage on the first one, R1, equals the current going through 1 times the resistance. Well, the voltage is going to be the current, which is 0 0.072, times the 50 that sits right here. And so I can find my voltage drop is 3.6 volts. Now if I want to find the power, I take V times I. Now here's, here's the kicker. That's 3.6 volts comes right down here. 
we don't use the 9 because the 9 is the total circuit voltage. We're looking at how much power is consumed by this resistor. So you take that 3.6 volts, bring it down, take the current, bring it over, and you find out it's 0.259 watts. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, put that over here, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before, only with our second resistor, 75 ohms. So 0 0.072 times 75, you get 5.4 volts. Now if you take 5.4 and 3.6, you add those up and surprisingly, you get 9 volts. So part of it, part of the voltage gets used here, part of the voltage gets used here. The power, voltage times current, if you take 5.4 volts, multiply it by 0 0.072 amps, you get 0.389 watts. And if you take 0.389 watts and 0.259 watts, you get 0.648 watts. So the power is distributed the same way. So in a series circuit, the voltages add up to the total, the power adds up to the total in your circuit, and the current is constant. But that's not the only type of simple circuit that we end up with. Sometimes we end up with what's called a parallel circuit. Now you can see this is exactly the same system that we had before, but it comes in and breaks into two things, just like this. And that's why it's called parallel, because a single conductor comes in, one way in, two way out. And then at the end of the parallel circuit, you have two ways into one. So this can be drawn several different ways. This is the standard way of drawing it, but this is a parallel circuit. Now we're still looking for the same types of things, but we have a different resistance formula. One over the total resistance is one over R1 plus one over R2 plus however many you have. Now, the tendency is for most people is to say, well, that's exactly the same thing, but mathematically, it is different. So you need to be able to use this properly. So let's put some of these numbers in. So we have our total resistance here. 1 over total resistance is 1 over 50 plus 1 over 75. Now, use a calculator. You can do this really simply. But let me just show you how it actually works in a written down old school form. 1 over RT is equal to 3 over 150 plus 2 over 150, least common denominator. And so we end up with a total of 5 over 150. Now, 1 over RT, 5 over 150, but then we flip it over. RT over 1 is 150 over 5, and guess what? My resistance is now 30 ohms. So I stick my 30 ohms over here. Now, is it if it's possible, I can actually then generate a single circuit like this with a 30 ohm resistor. And yes, I can now do this. Now you notice I labeled it R3. It's not R1, it's not R2 because it's not real. This is a simulated uh, resistor that is written down for me to get the total current, total power and so forth. And so I label it R or uh, R3. And so my voltage is 9, my current, my resistance. I find my current is 0.3 amps. Put it over here. My power, voltage times current, which comes from here, and my power is 2.7 watts. Now you notice that's significantly more than the series circuit. And here's the thing, the series circuit and the parallel circuit are using the exact same numbers. But because of the way it is designed, it is going to give you a different value of current and a different value of power. So if we go back to the original, I have these pieces of information and I have this circuit. But now in a parallel circuit, the voltage is constant and the current changes. So let's take a look. If the voltage is constant, that means the voltage coming in here and the voltage going out here across this circuit the voltage is constant. Well, because of that, the voltage is 9 volts. It's got 9 volts coming in and 9 volts goes across that one, 9 volts goes across that one. So that's the constant aspect of your parallel circuit and that's going to come to our advantage. So the voltage in the first resistor is equal to the current in the first resistor times the resistance of the first resistor. So 9 volts equals I1 times 50 
I find that I want is 0.18 amps. Stick it right over here. Do the same thing with the power. Power is going to be 9 volts times 0.18 amps, and you get 1.62 watts, and stick that right here. Go back to the same thing for the second resistor. The voltage is equal to I2 times R2. I have 9 volts equals I times 75 ohms. I find I2 is equal to 0.12 amps. And then I do the power. Same thing we did before, 9 volts times 0.12 amps. And we get 1.80 watts. And stick that over here. Now you notice my amps, 0.12 amps, 0.18 amps gives me 0.3 amps. In other words, there is less resistance here, so more current is going to flow through R1. More resistance, less current goes through R2, but the total current coming in is 0.3, and the total current going out is 0.3 amps. You take the watts, 2.7. If you add 1.62 and 1.08 watts, you get 2.7 watts. So this is how you solve simple resistor circuits, both series and parallel. I hope you find it helpful.